We're here with uh, Sifu Chris Collins, who is a martial arts expert, firearms expert, fight and action choreographer. He has trained in various fighting systems like Western boxing, Greco Roman wrestling, Wing Sun, Jiu Jitsu, and Kali. And he has an up and coming movie called Paradox, co starring with Tony Ja and uh, with uh, none other than Samo Hung directing the action. Sifu Collins, could you please tell us how you started out with, with martial arts and um, a bit about your background and your story? Yeah, sure. It's my pleasure. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, it's my honor to be able to uh, chat with you guys and, uh, and hopefully help inspire more people to study the martial arts and follow their dreams. Absolutely. Um, but martial arts, I mean, I started when I was five. Um, I grew up in a small town in Ohio, mm -hmm. up near Youngstown, Ohio, actually Niles, Ohio. Uh, up in the north northeast of America, and it's a very like small steel mill town. Uh, it's also the home of uh, Boom Boom Ray Mancini, which was a big time boxer in that day. Cool. And my I had a, had an older brother. He's four years older than me. And my dad decided to put us into boxing because well, we were the only Chinese kids in town. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a bit, you know. So he was definitely that was one of the things, and he. he Definitely want us to be able to protect ourselves. Mm. So um, he took us down to the local boxing club and made sure that we, we know how to protect ourselves. And we, weren't, we wouldn't shy away from the punch, basically. Mm. So I started that early on. Um, and then we moved down to Kentucky, where we continued to box. And then at that time, I started to learn wrestling mm. uh, because our, uh, the schools taught wrestling in there. So, so that became a very natural thing was boxing and wrestling. And that was really my staple. Uh, even when we moved down to Florida, um, after so many years, we moved down to Florida, and then there I was boxing at uh, Ray jo uh, Roy Jones Jr.'s gym. Right. Um, fantastic, because it was so close to us, and uh, you know, Hall of Fame legend. And to, to be doing that, I kind of really didn't think much about uh, what was self-defense or what was fighting, because you just grow up, you box, you wrestle, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of friends that were doing uh, martial arts at the time, but I didn't, uh, I didn't think too much of it because it just seemed uh, very easy to deal with everybody with a simple boxing and wrestling background. Right. Um, and so, I mean, I dabbled around here and there in different, different styles because my friends were doing them and I would try them out. But ultimately, I, I, I stuck with my boxing and my wrestling. Um, and then I think it was uh, towards the beginning of 1993 – uh, my dad brought me onto the Navy base. My dad was in the Navy at the time. We were based in Pensacola. And he brought me to a gentleman there who, who was an officer over there mm -hmm. uh, in the Navy. And he was doing what was called Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Oh, and yeah. uh, my dad was like, you should, you should probably learn this stuff. So that, that was my uh, introduction into Jiu-Jitsu. So it was nice to have a wrestling background. How was your um, transition from Greco-Roman wrestling to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? I mean, it's fine. It's just, you know, you learn that it's not so important to just pin a guy down as it is to actually be able to submit him and choke mm -hmm. him out, etc. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was fun. I mean, and, and not a lot of people really knew what it was or what they were doing with it. So, right. it was a very new thing, I guess. Um, but, yeah, so that was my introduction to that. And I, I stayed with that for a couple of years before I joined the, the military and moved on. I mean, actually, at that time, it was... It was uh, the university, and then it was military, and then I got stationed out onto the West Coast in California, mm -hmm. and that was actually my first introduction into Wing Chun. And we would go out to the park nearby the base. I was, I was stationed over at 29 Palms in California. And, you know, whenever you had downtime, we'd go out, we'd go to the park, you right. know, we'd grab some mints or whatever, just work out. Uh, there was an old man there, a uh, very old dude, old Chinese dude, and he'd always be at the same park bench, um, and he'd always be doing the same stuff. And I would just get so interested, like, what is this guy doing? And so one day I went over and I talked to him and started chatting. And then uh, he was really nice. And he was talking about Kung Fu, Chinese Kung Fu, martial arts, Bruce Lee, all this stuff. And I'm like, so w what is this? What are you doing? And he said, this is Wing Chun Kung Fu. Right. And we started talking about it. And I would, like, just playfully spar with him because he was, the dude was, like, in his 70s. And he was so... So nimble, so light, so quick, uh, very agile. Everything that you could, you know, imagine a younger person being. But he was in his 70s doing it, and he was doing it like effortlessly. Yeah. And so I was like, wow, this is really interesting to me. So I started to study about it. Like I started to do some research and 
obviously I'm like reading these different books on Chinese Kung Fu and, and I, I really kind of, uh, I really fell for the, the philosophy behind it. And I asked him, so where do I, where do I need to go for this? He said, go to Hong Kong. I said, okay. So then, uh, you know, after I think maybe six months to a year, I was uh, finishing up some uh, different schools in the military, mm -hmm. and then I decided, you know what, I'm going to go for this, because I think it's something that we really need. Mm. And so uh, I managed to get myself stationed in the Marines. I managed to get myself stationed in Southeast Asia so that I could focus on learning the Wing Chun in Hong Kong. So what was actually the appeal for you? Was it the fact that uh, this guy was in his 70s and he was still good? He was uh, working like he was young? Or um, was it like the, the technical aspect? What was the appeal for you to actually go deeper? Well, the, I mean, it was kind of like when you, when you box and wrestle for a long time, you know, you start to think like, man, this is just physical. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, unless you're just like ungodly good. You know, you're just amazing that you can just transcend everything else that everyone else does. But, right. you know, if you're me, you're just a guy and you just love boxing, you love wrestling. And you get to a point where you're like, man, this is just physical. Like, what happens if you can't match that person's physicality? Mm -hmm. And, you know, he kind of answered that for me with how he was moving. Because mm -hmm. I thought, if you can move like that in your 70s, man, imagine if I start this now, you know, I'm only 20. Right. Imagine if I start now how good that I could be moving because I already understood like getting punched in the face <laughs> and I you know like okay this is fine and going to the ground and this is fine but I was like man this is like smart hmm. and then it was the philosophy behind it the theories that they were talking about you know so you have like all these the you know this, this simple theory of center line approach um, the, the principles supporting that theory the methodology behind it and I thought this kind of uh, this makes sense with so many aspects of life, whereas a lot of different Kung Fu styles, they talk too much about like religion, mm. or Buddhism, or spiritual stuff, and I, you know, I, I don't really have time for those type of things, right. but I, I like the practical approach of, of the Wing Chun, it was simple, and it didn't require like uh, a person to be, you know, physical, mm -hmm. just smart. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So how was it when uh, when you went to Hong Kong to um, to dive deeper into Wing Chun? Oh, it was a headache, you know. I, I got there, and oh, man, I must have went to maybe thirty different Wing Chun schools. No exact. <laughs> like every day, I, you know, I had a list and a piece of paper, and I wrote all these names down and all these different schools that I found. Yeah. And I, I go and visit them. You know, um, some of them were nice, some of them were not. Um, uh, I don't, I, you know, I don't want to say anything negative. I just mean like I, I looked at so many different ones, mm -hmm. um, and and a couple of them they tried to like put me into like a uh, like a not really a, I wouldn't say a fight, but it was it, it felt like a kind of a challenge they were putting and I and, and I had no idea what Wing Chun was at the time, so I'm like right. it doesn't make sense, you know. So but it was very you know easy for me to to be able to protect myself, and I thought okay these guys are kind of loony, and then I left, and then. I go to another one, and he's like, yeah, you can learn the wooden dummy for 3,000 U.S. dollars. And I said, sir, I don't even know what a wooden dummy is. Like, <laughs> what are you trying to do to me? Um, and, then, uh, and then I would say, for the most part, I was brokenhearted mm. because I was seeing all these Wing Chun schools, and I wasn't seeing what I, was, what I would expect to see in a martial art, in a combat system. Right. What do I mean by that? Well, I grew up as an athlete, okay? I grew up playing sports. And so when you play sports your whole life, you understand how the body needs to work to generate power. You understand how to have a stance, how to use your hips, how to create momentum, all these different things. And then I would see how they were moving, and I thought, okay, this doesn't make sense because this person has no athleticism at all on how they move, and it mm. was it was off, right? And so... It was very discouraging. I thought, man, this is this is what Bruce Lee was talking about. It can't be. I was really, like I said, broken hearted. And then, um, and I'm not trying to say that because of where I went is the best. I'm just saying it made sense for me. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I was on my last day. I called my last day because I was really frustrated and ready to give up. And um, I'm walking down Nathan Road, and I see 
uh, a fist symbol, and it and it says the Mountain Gym. And I honestly thought it was like a gym, like maybe I'm so bored I'm gonna go lift some weights. Right. And I get up there, and I see uh, a young man similar to my age, and uh, from Hong Kong. I knock on the door. He opens the door, and he, he scowls at me and says, "What do you want?" And I said, "Well." I'm here to learn Wing Chun, and he said, because I saw, obviously I saw the signs that it was Wing Chun, you know, and he says, well, go sit down and wait for Sifu. Yeah. And, All right. So we're scowling at each other, like, just, like, we want to fight each other, like, two, two, uh, two chickens before they fight, you know, two roosters or whatever, and, uh, like, a cock fight. And so I sit down, and I'm watching him work out, and I'm, I'm mesmerized, like, I was like, wow, this guy moves better than Bruce Lee, like, it's amazing. You know, all of his mechanics, how he moved, it was fluid, and everything he did, it was powerful. They, he's on the wooden dummy, he's in the air, he's on the bag, and I'm like, this guy is phenomenal. So he ends up becoming my best friend for the past 20 years. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, That's interesting, and, uh, yeah. So, my soon-to-be Sifu, who I have no idea who he is, he finally mm. arrives. Some other students are already there, um, and, he, you know... How can I help you? He's very, very humble gentleman, very kind, you know. But so I don't talk too long about this. But he, he goes about teaching his class, and, I, and I'm watching. I'm just observing. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching all these young kids, young people, like trying to fight him, right? And they're trying so hard and breathing so heavily, and he's just so calm and relaxed. Mm. And he reminded me of that man that I met in California. He had a smile on his face, and he would just hit them gently, mm. no effort. And he put a smile on his face, and I thought, this is what I'm looking for, you know? And uh, I signed up right there, uh, and I've been with him, uh, with my Sifu, uh, Cheng Chun Fun, for the past 20 years, him and uh, Professor Leung Ting, um, at, you know, at the IWTA, and um, yeah, so I feel like it was one of the best decisions of my life. Awesome. How did you stumble on to Kali as well? Okay, so for the Kali, the first time that I saw Kali, I was we were based. I was still in the Marines, based in California, and then again when I was in Southeast Asia, because mm -hmm. uh, I got to travel around to a lot of countries while in the Marines, and I came across the Pekin Tertia, and I thought this was like this is an awesome system. Um, so luckily, uh, because they kind of go through like a vetting process in those days to where it was like, you know, who are you? Who wants to learn the system? Right. And obviously they knew who I was. Like, oh, Chris, he's for Sri Khan Marine. Da 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 da. He's good to go. And uh, then I got the introduction. And then uh, that was, you know, with uh, Tuhan Ramel Torto, Tuhan uh, Leo Gahe, you know. And so just being able to meet them and then start training with them, uh, I really just opened my cup or emptied my cup, I should say, because. You know, obviously, I had like at that time I'd already good ten years in of the Wing Chun, mm -hmm. and so I thought my coordination was pretty good. Right. And uh, I quickly realized that it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so the Pekiti Tertia was—it's all about finesse, you know. It's not about power, or heavy strokes. It was—it was really cutting the line so clean, mm -hmm. and with both arms and simultaneously. And I loved it. I loved it. I still do. Um, and I, I, I really enjoy these weapon systems training with the Pekiti Tertia because that's all it is. You know, it's it's uh, one method, any weapon, it doesn't matter. You don't change your concept. Mm -hmm. um, you just modify. And so I love the methodology of the Pekiti Tertia. Yeah, there are some similarities in the Wing Chun, such as like the, maybe like the Bill G idea of Wing Chun and, and the Pekiti Tertia Kali mm -hmm. uh, would be very similar, you know, just to give you kind of a broad overscope. But, but I just love that it, it, it's focused on developing your coordination um, and your timing and understanding how to move your body. It's not all about fighting. It's, it's about really just mastering your movement and understanding your opponent's movement. Mm. Yeah, I That's love it. very, very interesting. And I watched some of your videos and uh, you're still a very, very good um, athlete. A lot of, there's this conception in Wing Chun that um, actually most martial arts, that the more you work, you work out physically, the slower you get. Yeah. Well, how, yes. how do you keep yourself fluid and fast? Okay, so this this part here actually is an interesting story, not too long, but so I'm just plugging in my phone real quick so my battery doesn't die. No problem. Um, should be good. 
Yes. Okay, so, can you see me? Yes. Alright. So, basically, when I arrived in Hong Kong, I mean, I was like 185, 190. It was just literally like a brick house. Obviously, I'm, I'm in the Marines at the time, so you just yeah. train constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I'm, I'm studying the Wing Chun, and I, I'm thinking like, uh, okay, I'm figuring this out. But I felt so bad because, like, a lot of my uh, a lot of my training partners were like 135 pounds. Yeah. So I could easily just like grab them and boom and hit them. And I thought, you feel bad. But I quickly realized this was my problem. Mm. Was that it, I I had the strength advantage, the size advantage, the athleticism that I wasn't allowing myself to equalize it. Mm -hmm. and develop skill yeah so i cut my body weight i literally fasted until i went down to 155 pounds mm -hmm. like i shrunk I, was, I felt like i had complete muscle atrophy right i was always fatigued and then i would train cheese mm -hmm. and then i started to understand what we're training only at that point so i had to i had to correct all my errors once i did that and then you start to understand like how to become powerful without using your muscles, but allowing your structure, your skeletal system, your tendons and your ligaments to do the work for you. Mm. And Absolutely. so this was like a big revelation for me. Um, maybe I think actually in all the, all the martial arts or all the Chinese Kung Fu, like they know this already. Okay. But maybe for me it was new. <laughs> yeah, and I yeah. thought, ah, oh, this is, this is amazing. This is fantastic. Like I finally found a point where I could relax and work. You know, I wasn't thinking anymore. I wasn't trying to do stuff. And then I waited a good two or three years. And then I thought, okay, my Wing Chun is good. It is solid. So then I started to get myself back into my normal weight training regime. Mm -hmm. And then it's okay. But, of course, it requires some balance. You know, mm. just like um, I have some students, they, they learn the Wing Chun with me. And then they also do the Jiu Jitsu with me. Right. And they do the Wing Chun, it's fine. The cardio is good, it's easy, you don't really have to work too hard. Mm -hmm. And then they join the Jiu Jitsu with me, and then all of a sudden you see them go, <laughs> everything drops. They got yeah. no energy, they're pale, they're dropping weight. And I say, hey man, you can't, you can't kind of live the same lifestyle once you start doing so much. You have right. to like eat healthy, take care of yourself. You know, you've got to build some muscle mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. kind of deal with all that uh, tension. You know, because like Wing Chun is, it's basically shocks going forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards a thousand times in a session. That's really bad, right? I mean, if you think about it, mm -hmm. it destroys the elbow joint, destroys the shoulder joint, destroys the spine, specifically C5, 6, and 7, which I have uh, titanium to fuse mine. Okay. Okay, because mm -hmm. I had spinal fusion. Uh, I had shoulder surgery. You know, all this was, there's so much pressure that the Wing Chun creates and the movement from the joints. I mean, I've got uh, uh, two bone spurs, you know, in, in my right elbow. I got tendonitis in my left and developing uh, bone spurs in my left. To be honest, it's the <laughs> first time... It, it's the first time I hear somebody having, uh, you know, problems with their joints and, and their shoulders from Wing Chun. Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, if you train it a lot, it'll happen because mm -hmm. it's constant. Just like if cool. you're boxing, everything is da, 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 over and over, you know. Uh, whereas, like if you're doing something like jujitsu, it's more like three dimensional, so you're moving all over the place at different angles. So it's actually almost more therapeutic, I would say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, um, to answer the question, you do need to go through a period in learning Wing Chun to where you you, you don't want to have any strength. Right. You know, I call it the I call it the spaghetti formula. You know, you learn just spaghetti. No al dente, just spaghetti, okay? Soft as you can possibly be. Yeah. No resistance. Then, okay, then you start to develop an understanding, and then you can start to deal with maybe adding a little bit more to your structure, mm. based on what you feel comfortable with. Because, right. Because, you know, all of this stuff is created by man. None of it's perfect, right? So we must explore with ourselves, yeah. How do you... Uh, let's talk a bit about your schedule as well, because... You teach so many martial arts, and you also find time to film for, um, um, you know, for, for your movies. How do you structure your day? I don't. I just do it. Yeah. No, it's actually my, uh, 
everybody always tells me I should write a book, you know, and I said, one day I'll write a book as soon as I finish what I'm doing, but uh, my whole goal is to, is to not plan any of it. I don't structure any of it, you know, I really just, I fly by the seat of my pants and I believe that passion will carry me the way. Yeah. Um, as long as I'm passionate about it, I love what I'm doing. And I wake up every morning with that same ambition, that same drive and motivation, and I'm inspired, then I'm going to have the successes that I want. And yeah. you have to believe in these things, yeah. right? I mean, that's what we tell ourselves every single day. So I wake up, you know, and, I, and literally I will, do, I will do Wing Chun, I will do boxing, I will do jiu-jitsu, I will do Kali, I will do weight training, I will do flight choreography every single day, mm. you know, based on whatever group classes I've got going on, whatever private classes I've got going on. Um, and then if my manager calls me and says, hey, I need you to come meet with these uh, choreography guys and work out a fight scene or meet with right. this director, and okay, bam, then I fly over there and I do that and I come back, you know? Um, yeah. Just, I, for the, for the people you know, listening, guys, always, always follow your deepest excitement because it will lead you to the right path, to the right thing, always. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Listen, I listen mean, to I have your body. So many of my students, which I'm sure everybody that teaches, they, they run into so many students that are living, living a very difficult life because they're stuck in this rat race, they're doing this job, they hate it, yet they do it 12 to 16 hours a day so that they can, I don't know, buy a watch or buy a car yeah. and then and then watch a big screen TV and then just depressed. They're so unhappy. You know, and I've watched this pattern. I've been teaching for, you know, over 20 years. So you see a pattern in all this. And, you know, I, I may not be doing anything special. I, I don't know. But uh, but I really try to make sure that I'm just doing it all on my own terms. Mm. Uh, and I, I'll definitely voice my opinion to a student if I see them, you know, putting too much into that work and I'm watching them fade away like a skeleton of himself. Yeah. Say, Why are you doing it? Who yeah, are you doing yeah. it for? For the company that you work for? They don't care about you. Like, feed yeah, I, I think it was Alan Watts who said, you know, this this uh, concept is crazy because when you're doing something that you don't like to earn more money, so that you allow yourself, so you're earning more money, so that you can do more of that thing that you don't like, right? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So yeah, I've been in that trap as well, and I hated like every minute of it. And um, once I learned to trust my body when it says look this is what you should be doing feels good do it right doesn't feel good don't do it right it's yeah. very very simple but most people don't really listen to that um how did you is that how you got into acting as well did you follow your um, um uh, again i don't your play passion? any of this okay um okay so back in 96 when i came to hong kong uh, uh one of my jobs was doing security so i was bouncing and uh, one day this lady's just like staring at me outside of the club and, and I'm looking at her like, you know, you're not getting in, you know, <laughs> this sort of thing. And she says, no, no, no. She's like, have you ever done any modeling? And I'm like, no, I've never done any modeling and that's not going to get you through the door either. <laughs> she says, no, no, I don't want to go in. She said, I, but I really think that you should do some modeling. Please give me a call tomorrow. Okay, so I call her up and she proceeds to put me in a couple of ads in Hong Kong for like some clothing companies. And, uh, and that was kind of cool. And then from that, then uh, some people started to call me about doing some film. And so I dabbled around in it very small. And I thought, this is a waste of time. This, you know, I was, I was in my early 20s. I just wanted to train. Right. So I said, no thanks, I'm not interested. And at this time, I had met Jackie Chan, I had met Donnie Yen, you know. So I'm like, okay, but whatever, I want to be a fighter, I just want to train, Yeah. and, and that's all I was interested in, so I scratched that, and then when I, uh, sorry, when I came back, when I came back to Hong Kong the second time, and this time was uh, with my wife from Hong Kong, and with our son, Nicholas, um, who's turning nine next month, oh, but uh, awesome. Happy birthday. we came back, and, and then uh, some guy calls me out of the blue, and he's seen my, uh, some of my videos on YouTube. Mm. And he says, can we meet? And I meet him. And he's like, hey, I really need some of your consulting on this upcoming movie. I'm like, yeah, sure, cool. And it was like, you know, teaching them firearms, how to move, some of the fighting, knife work, hand to hand. And it turns out, uh, he's my very good friend now, Nicky. Uh, he was with Jackie Chan for 25 years. He's a famed action director. He's awesome. I mean, right. he, just, he just won the award uh, in 2016 for the best action 
uh, uh, for SPL2, you know, and so he brings me in, and I end up doing a few few small movies, uh, helping with the choreography, and also acting a little bit, mm -hmm. and and then uh, and then bless him, he he, while we're on the set of SPL2, he introduces me to uh, Paco Wong, and Paco is like the He's the big man, you know, in the in the movie industry. Uh, he's a big time manager, and so he met me, and I didn't know who he was, and we started talking, and then he started sending me a lot of uh, actors and actresses to teach, and so I've been mm. teaching them to this day. I still teach them, awesome. help them to become more realistic in their fighting. I I, I finished teaching uh, Janice Mann for her movie uh, in Helios. Mm -hmm. She won an award for it. Everybody was like so shocked that she looked like such an awesome fighter, right. you know. And then, uh, and then Paco said to me, "Chris, I want you to be an actor. You can do it, you know." And I said, "No, no, I'm too old. Come on, I just <laughs> stay behind the scenes, <laughs> you know." And he said, "No, no, trust me. We're gonna do this." I said, "Okay, I trust you, and I do. It's a fantastic person." Right. And uh, yeah, there you go. So then he now he's he's got me into the industry. He's, you know, he took me up with Paradox when we did that, and I got to meet Samuel Hong and, and learn so much from him. I mean, because that's one of my goals is to is to be an action director. You know, um, you know, a funny funny story related to all this because mm. um, I'll probably sideline or sidetrack for a second. But so back in uh, I think it was 2000 when my sifu uh, gave me the title of being a sifu, mm -hmm. and I was I was getting ready to go to London with my wife. And he said to me, Chris, you know, there's there's three ways for you to make a living in the martial arts. He said, the first one is fighting, which you know already. Because at that time, I'd already traveled around Asia fighting in as many tournaments as I could. But back then, it was nothing. And he said, yeah, you can see there's no money in that, right? Maybe 1% of the people doing it make money, and you're probably going to get a lot of concussions. So he says, you already know that. So we say that's the easiest because... You know, you can really just focus on yourself. Mm. And he says the second one is as as a teacher, which is what you are doing. You know, and he says you can be a teacher. You really have to know your Wing Chun. You gotta master it. You gotta know it in and out. Know how to articulate it. Know how to demonstrate it. Obviously, be very good at it, and then open up your mind to 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 uh, to spending most of that energy helping others as opposed mm -hmm. to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He says, it's a little bit more difficult. And I said, I love doing that. <laughs> and then he said, the third one is to get into the movie industry. You know? He said, <laughs> he said, look at Bruce Lee. You know, he's like, you get in the movie industry, you know, you get to inspire even more people. Mm. You know? Because, uh, and you get to do what you love doing on screen. Everybody gets to see you doing it. And, uh, you know, it was like that. And, and he said, so what do you want to do? And I said, well, I'm doing two. I'll, I'll figure out a way to do the third one, you know. And so, like, that's kind of my uh, my last goal that I want to achieve is to be able to make it work in the film industry. It's quite funny, you know, because I and I love it because you you have to have an even more uh, even more open mind in the film industry because everybody's an expert. Everybody's right. an expert Taekwondo guy, expert karate guy, expert wushu guy, mm -hmm, expert mm -hmm, Wing Chun mm -hmm. guy, expert Kali guy. So, who cares? Nobody cares. Yeah. They just exactly. want you to make it look good on screen. And I love it. So I'm like with one guy today and he's like amazing kicker. I'm like, wow. And how do I how do I incorporate that? How do I how do I make that look amazing on camera? And you learn things, obviously, right? You learn different things. Why do you guys kick like this? Why do you guys move like that? Uh, so it I really think it enhances my understanding of martial arts just by being around it. Absolutely. And I by the way, this is a gorgeous gorgeous story i got so much out of it and i'm sure the people listening feel so inspired by um by this idea and uh we'll probably see uh, more a lot more videos online of people doing martial arts and just showing their their craft which is which is amazing um what i wanted to to add basically is that when when you're putting yourself in that kind of a position and being in, in the movie industry you're probably also becoming a lot more humble because you're a lot more open to people criticizing what you do and uh, like because you're a lot more out there in, in public and you cannot just get upset 
from all yeah, this stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You just and let this it fly. Happens to a lot of people, for sure. This happens to a lot of people. But you know, you just can't care. Like if you if you're afraid to fail, you'll never succeed. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm I'm a firm believer in that. You know, you just gotta go out there and do what you do, love what you do, and, and really not care about what anyone else is saying or thinking about you. Absolutely, I'm sure your your understanding and the meaning of Wing Chun in your life has um, has dramatically has really changed from maybe from one year to another, maybe from one day to another. But what is Wing Chun to you today? From a uh, you know from a choreographer, from a person who tra who trains so many different martial arts, from a teacher, how how do you feel or how do you see Wing Chun today? How do I see it? In like general, like what is what um, is Wing Chun to you, I basically? See it in mm. my myself, yeah. In myself, yeah. You know, Wing Chun changed the way I think. It really, it really. So you could say it, it was it was uh, something that changed my life. It's one of those doorways that changed my life. Um, you know, uh, it it helped me. Yeah, it gave me a different way to understand things. Um, it helped me to understand what a learning process was. Mm -hmm. And I think. That if a person can understand the true learning process, there's really nothing that they can't learn, nothing that they can't understand, right? I mean, of course, that sounds pretty vague and almost like a book, but mm -hmm. but I, I really believe in that, you know. Like a lot, you see a lot of people, they don't understand certain things, but you see them over here understanding it on this, but they can't understand it here. But actually, it's the same thing, you know. So you just gotta be able to like disconnect from specifically what this is to understanding like. How it became what it is, mm -hmm. and uh, I spent so much time trying to figure out Wing Chun that I think it gave me that. Mm -hmm. It gave me that ability to understand the learning process. You know, I'm not going to say that I can sit there and do some type of uh, uh, like a doctor's job or a lawyer's job. You know, I mean, this is just more information, right? I think right. What I mean, like, you know, but understanding. The complexities that make these things up and, and how to achieve them. Um, I, it, it also could be my age, you know, because when you're younger, you just want to fight. Mm -hmm. And when you get older, you're not so much about fighting, you're more about understanding things. So, so that can also play a part. Again, there's many different factors uh, to think about. Uh, but Wing Chun to me is what's behind everything of how I do things. If that if that can make sense, um, I use that as kind of my uh, my go-to in my my, my my bag. Like when I try to understand a theoretical approach and its principles and okay. its methodology and how to try to present it, I, I go back to my Wing Chun ideas mm -hmm. and I think how to make that work. Um, and it's given me the ability to learn things very quickly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's the best way I can explain it, you know. Like, for instance, my, my, my students, you know, like some of my students, they only learn Wing Chun. Some of them only boxing. Some of them only common. Some of them only Jiu Jitsu. Right. But a lot of them eventually come around and they learn all the stuff with me. Mm -hmm. And what they all say to me that is so interesting is they, they say, you know, whether you're talking about Wing Chun or Kali or Jiu Jitsu or boxing or even choreography, it's like you're always saying the same things. It's just a little bit different, a little bit modified, you know? Okay. And it's, because it's it's my brain, how I understand things. So mm -hmm. I think once you understand that, then you can, it's easy to express multiple things because you understand it in the same way. Um, maybe this is all making sense, maybe not. Yeah, it is a bit out there. It, it is a bit vague. I'm I'm also trying to tie it up uh, in my in my head as well right now. Mm, you said something very interesting. You said that it's behind the way you think or the, everything behind everything you do, right? If if you were to give that thing a name, what would you name it? <laughs> to give that man, it's it's my. It's just my method, you know. Okay. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's my method. In Chinese, right? Okay, um, we say uh, "fang fa." Fang fa is like how we say method in Chinese. Right. And the first character "fang" is part of explaining like uh, a box. Okay. Okay. So, mm -hmm. like a square. Right. If I wanted to say square, then "fang" would be part of that. Mm -hmm. How to say mm -hmm. it? And 
so the meaning behind that is why 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 is that part of the, the character structure for the word uh, method? Because a method, you could say it, it, it has a, a perimeter, right? Or set of limitations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So so everybody has their method based on their own set limitations. Okay. Or perimeters of thought, mm -hmm, right? So mm -hmm. so like this. So. Yeah, so if I say method, then it's kind of like I have my own way of, of thinking about things, and maybe it's from spending so many years, you know, trying to figure out Wing Chun, and then trying to figure out how to teach the Wing Chun, and, and how to live kind of like this type of idea, or a martial arts way of living, and, right. and it just encompassed itself into, into this, this uh, limits, you know, this mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's where I go to to, to think about things. Mm, interesting. Yeah, it's definitely... Yeah, each and every person definitely uh, listening right now, they're thinking, okay, what's my method right now? How could I make my method? And the truth is, is there's no one and you know, it's like tailor-made. You make it for yourself. Or Absolutely. You create I mean, your own this, this boils down to, you know, writing a list, of, writing a list down of what you value most in life. Yeah. You know, what are, you, what are your long-term goals? What are your short-term goals? What do you value the most? What do you like the most? What do you dislike the most? Mm. And, and these are how you figure out who you are, mm. right? And so, you know, the more mature you get, the more you connect these things. You know, when you're in your 20s, none of it makes sense. It's all here, 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 here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just like, what you hear, like what I think it was, it was Steve Jobs that said, you can only connect the dots looking backwards, not forward. Yeah, it's, it's, awesome. it's experience, isn't it? Cool. You know, I mean, before I, before I ask you our last our last question, can you give us some information about your new movie with uh, Tony Jaw and maybe a bit about your sponsors? Oh yeah, fantastic. Yeah, Paradox. Here it is. Um, got a little thing that I keep in my gym. There's there's the movie Paradox. Yeah, guys, head uh, out to our blog because I'll link um I'll post the link to the video so you can see uh, the poster as well. Gorgeous poster, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. and then there you you know you got uh, you got Louis Ku, yeah. you know, which is like, probably the biggest actor in Asia. Mm -hmm. He's awesome, and he's actually doing some action in this movie. Like, like oh. he's doing some fighting. So you know, impressed with his hard work. Right. Um, you got Wu Yu, uh, Wu Yu, who's a uh, who's an upcoming actor from China. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Wu Chu guy. He's actually like uh, same time as uh, Wu Jing or Jackie Wu. You got uh, Lam Gat Hong, which is a, he, you know, he's like a phenomenal dramatic actor in Hong Kong. He helped me a lot. Awesome. You got Tony Ja, Tony Ja in here, and then you got myself. So basically, all these guys are coming after me. Really? <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm the bad guy. You look. So I'm a, uh, you look dangerous like with those uh, huge blades over there. They look. He's badass. You guys yeah. can can see this probably if you're listening to the audio, but they look some badass. Uh, they look like some badass bat jump those over there. <laughs> well, you know, the idea was we didn't want to make any of the styles look like a style. So right. there's a bit of boxing, there's a bit of Wing Chun, there's a bit of Kali, there's a bit of Jiu Jitsu, but you really can't tell that that's what it is. Awesome. Uh, where can people kind of where can people idea. watch the the movie? What's that? Where can people watch the movie? Uh, it'll come out towards the end of the year. Uh, there's gonna be a big. Uh, big uh, marketing thing for it but mm -hmm, it, it's definitely mm -hmm. made towards the end of the year on one of the uh, I would imagine one of the big holiday mm -hmm. holiday weekends awesome so guys go ahead and get in touch with uh, with Sifu Collins um, connect with him on Facebook because he'll most probably announce when the movie is coming out so you can uh, watch it as well and check out his uh, YouTube channel I'll post the link in the description as well okay and uh, yeah just real quick I, I want to give a shout out to my to my newest sponsor uh, Reebok to you know, Reebok is uh, developing this new Reebok combat line. Um, lots of cool clothing that, that uh, you know, whether you do an MMA or whether you, you just do a normal sports stuff, they got a lot of great gear coming out, so so check it out. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, follow, follow uh, Reebok underscore HK on Instagram. And then uh, another one of my sponsors here, which is uh, Virtus, V-A-R-T-U-S. Uh, it's a U.S. combat veteran-owned company. We're uh, developing a tactical clothing line, watches, you know, a lot of really cool stuff. Anyway, you can check out Virtus Outdoors on Instagram. Uh, my buddy David David Johnson Wood is uh, one of my motivated uh, Marine brothers who is, uh, who's running this company. Awesome. And obviously we got here at Defense Soap. So if you're going to train hard and you're going to sweat, 
you don't want to leave that other person sweat all over your body. So go with some natural tea tree oil to, uh, based uh, defense soap to wash it off, guys. And awesome. It works. Actually, it goes a long way. You don't waste uh, you don't waste so much soap. And uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. We just have like one more fast question. Um, sure. If you would, if you could give your students and the people listening right now only one advice, what would that be? Just don't give up. You know, don't don't give up. No matter no matter how hard it gets. You know, I've had so many setbacks in my life. So many times where uh, it didn't make sense. Where I, you know, I have nothing. And uh, everything is telling you to go the other way. Mm. Everything else, everything is telling you to try something else. Um, I mean, obviously you got to listen to these things, but just because it, it puts you on another angle, don't stop moving forward. You know, don't give up on yourself and settle. Don't settle for just this dead end, whatever. You know, yeah. like we we all have just as much right as anyone to chase our dreams and to never give up. You know, hmm. it's not about you have to grow up. So stop living your dream. Keep living your dream. <sighs> that is that is so funny, and that is is so valuable what you're saying right now. And funny at the same time because just yesterday I reposted one of um, actually my favorite video that I ever made, which basically the, the message, the core message of of the video is just don't give up or never give up on your dreams. Just just go forward. Right. Believe in that. Yeah, it's, it's my it's my motto on my shirt. Uh, no easy day. No easy day. <laughs> no easy so. day. You never take it lightly. Every day, every day should be hard, because at the end of the day, you want to know that you did everything you could to succeed. Excellent. And one day, one day it'll happen. I, I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for for your time and uh, in your busy schedule. This was awesome. I, I really enjoy talking and um, I, I feel so so enthusiastic about this up and coming movie. I can't wait to see it. Um, awesome. I'll tell my friends, you see that guy with the, the huge butt jam doors? I interviewed him. We talked. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Likewise. Guys, as always, head out to addictedtowingchun.com to um, uh, download some awesome free stuff. And um, if you're passionate about Wing Chun, but you don't have a school close to you, or maybe just your schedule doesn't allow you to come to class uh, regularly, definitely check out our online Wing Chun community where we'll help you unleash your power, heal yourself, and um, definitely have a uh, solid Wing Chun foundation that you can use. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.